fucking right. Good morning, everyone, and uh, this is uh, the trip to Death Road. Uh, <laughs> um, so I'll just tell you a little bit about planning. There wasn't much. So what happened was I got to La Paz the night before. I, um, I went downstairs and there was this motor touring place called Moto Tours, uh, motor, Motorbike Tours Bolivia. And um, I chatted to the guy who was the manager there and I said, look, is there any way uh, you could get us a, um, a, a guide to take us to Death Road, uh, to take me to Death Road? And he goes, yeah, sure. Uh, he said, I'll make a few phone calls. And he gave me a couple of options. There's an American guy that wanted $160, $180 or whatever for the day. And then there was, uh, there was another guy that wanted about $100, $120 for the day. And uh, he spoke a little bit of English. And, I just thought, well, you know, I don't really need, you know, someone who speaks perfect English to uh, to to help me, to help me. So I organised that, and I was in, in touch with Chris, who I'd met, Chris, one of the other riders who I'd met on on the Star Rat, and um, and uh, he's he was about eight eight hours, six or oh, five six hours away. Um, he was in Bolivia, but he was he was across. He had to cross a. Uh, on a ferry to get across uh, and then get on the road. So he was going to leave at first light. I think, he, actually, I think he was only about two or three hours away. Um, and uh, so he was going to meet us at uh, 8, 8 a.m. Um, outside outside the motor tours, which was right below the hotel I was staying. It was just a stroke of luck. And so he said, sure, shit, yeah, I'll, I'll do it for sure. That sounds great, you know. Um, and so we met the tour guide, which his name was Tito, and Tito was um, Tito was a gun. You know, he was like he had a, a Suzuki, and he just wanted to fly the whole time. You know. <laughs> so uh, so Chris, who's wearing the yellow helmet, and Tito's got the uh, yellow yellow raincoat on. So we had a fair bit of rain on this road and you're going to see me slip right there. Look at that. <laughs> so the reason was is that I've got the Heidenau uh, K60s and uh, the Heidenau Scouts, but I've got the really wide version. Chris has actually got the same tyre but a lot thinner version and he's got the, he's got the uh, slits through right through the centre of the uh, tyre the while I actually don't. Mine is just smooth right through the middle. And so I had all sorts of problems on, on cobblestones, on... Um, on, on slippery mud, it just kept sliding out from under me. But, um, you know, Chris is a lot, um, a lot more experienced rider too. You can see he's just always up my backside. Um, but um, but th this road here was, honestly, as we go up, this was a lot more crazy than the road we, than Death Road. Um, you know, look at, look at the views that you've got down, I mean, as we kept sweeping up, the the you, you, we, there was no more of the 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 grass. The trees were all gone. It was all just you know just uh, just foliage, basically like a moss and bit of bit of grass. And um, and the track got thinner and thinner as we went up higher and higher. Um, so it was basically a one track, basically. Um, and. Uh, and then a couple, and at one stage there, we ran into some. The, all these trucks got stuck, and so basically we had to. Um, we had to. He wanted us to go up the left, up the mountain, and my bike just wouldn't go up. Like we tried, 
I mean, I tried it. You know, maybe it's my skill level or whatever, but I just couldn't get up there. And my bike, whenever we hit the mud, you can look at the, look how high up, high up we, we end up going. Whenever I hit the mud, I was just wanting to to uh, to go off, and you know, we get massive steep drops to the left, and uh, you know, <laughs> it got pretty crazy, but it was a lot of fun. Um, and we just kept going up, and we stopped at a few places along the way. And, and uh, Tito, Tito, he, he was pretty good with his English, and he just laughed at us half the time, you know. But he just wanted to go, go, go. This, this is us doing our stupid hero stances. Uh, but yeah, we, we, we kept crawling up and higher and higher. And, uh, and uh, the, you know, this is all right where there's a bit of where there's rock. But when it was just mud, my bike just didn't want to, just didn't want to play, you know. Even with the side cases off and a fair bit of the weight out of it, um, you know, that's, I think it's a bit of a bit of my experience and, and also the tyres just weren't up to it. And um, but it was a hell of a lot of fun. Jeez, it was fun. And uh, we stopped a few times on the way. Like the total trip took us nine, nine, not nearly ten hours. But we stopped for like probably five hours. We were stopped. And here's some of the views looking down. I mean, that you, it doesn't look that steep, but I tell you right now, it was it was pretty crazy steep down there. If you lost the bike over the edge, the bike was going all the way down the bottom, and uh, you were probably going with it. Um, but it was just so much fun. And um, Tito Tito kept jumping ahead of us because we were a lot slower than him. And he had a he had a off road bike, like he had a, a little Suzuki, and he could just fly with that thing. And he loved putting his legs out, like he put his legs out really wide, just scraping the ground. But this, this was the road to get to Death Road. And normally you just go on the highway, but if you go onto my blog post, you'll see that there, I've got the river app of the route that we took. And you can download that and upload it to Google, uh, to your own Google Maps. And or or anything else, even your even your GPS device. I was just trying to keep my bike straight through the little bits of mud. Um, it was probably safer riding actually through the middle strip, but every now and then it, it got a little bit got a little bit weird. But um, yeah, we're we're climbing and climbing and climbing, and then we end up getting onto a bit of a highway where we um, we where we uh, end up going. Uh, for about 10 miles on the highway, maybe 15 miles on the highway, and then and then we then we hit Death Road. Now with Death Road, um, we'll come to it. it. It's pretty open in, in most places. There's probably about three or four areas where it gets uh, gets a little bit crazy. A little bit just slide now. Yeah, I just decided to waddle it and all, all through the slippery stuff. Um, and then we, we ended up sweeping all the way around and down uh, a little bit. And here's another stop off up in the mountains, pretty cool. That's another place we stopped along the way. Um, but look at the look at the drops to the left. Yeah, any time there was just mud, my bike was just sliding out. Unless, unless I can get some grip, it just kept sliding out. There's Chris on his bike. Another one of Chris. Chris has been riding for since he was a kid. Uh, he does mountain bike riding as well. He's a really cool guy. He's a really nice guy. Um, you know, and he's a, a patient. It's it. You know, there's two types of riders you don't want to ride with. You don't want to ride with guys who just want to go, go, go crazy, and you don't want to you don't want to ride with guys who always want to complain and you know want to stop all the time or or stuff like that. And Chris is just one of these guys that's just up for anything. Uh, it's crazy out jobs as well. This is a problem here. You see there on the bike, and you just want to keep looking down and and over and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, it got it got pretty. This, this is on the way to death road. I, I thought this was a lot more, uh, a lot more, um, a lot more uh, dangerous than. Uh, I'm not, it's not dangerous. I mean, you've got to be doing something stupid if you're going to come off. You know? um, but I thought this was a lot more hair raising than the, the than actual death road. Now, 
Um, it's too dark. He was funny. We we had a good laugh up on up the top actually. I'll talk to you about that later. Yeah, but he, he was uh, he had problems with his uh, with his uh, with his brakes as well, um, or maybe with his no, it was with his with his no, it was with his no, it was with his brakes. He was having some problems with his brakes, but he repaired them on the way. Uh, didn't take him long. This is us just getting a little photo together. There's Chris. We had all these cameras set up and. Um, and it was pretty cool, but uh, Chris had problems with one of his memory cards, so we lost a bit of footage there. This is just sped up a little bit, this video. But yeah, you're, 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 you're pretty high up, and uh, Death Road has, has parts of this. Um, this road just didn't have any traffic. We, we might have had one or two trucks uh, come past us. Um, I don't know where he wanted to take me, take us when he wanted to do a detour, but we ended up coming back down the mountain because my bike wouldn't get up. Uh, it was just mud, like yes, you know, 12 inches thick of mud, and my bike just wouldn't get up there. It just kept sliding and, and wouldn't wouldn't uh, wouldn't grip. Um, and we ended up going back around and then sort of edging our way past all the trucks that had that have that had got bogged and stuff like that. So, which was didn't end up being a problem. We should have done that in the first place. <laughs> Chris was trying to push me up the hill, but it wouldn't, the bike just wouldn't go. It just kept digging in, sliding left and right. But um, yeah, so if you want to take this route, I would suggest you do it. Uh, I wouldn't want to do it in really, really heavy mud uh, or rain. Uh, it would be pretty interesting then, but it depends what bike you've got too. Um, if you've got a bike that can handle that sort of stuff, and a lot of fun. We met a couple of Swiss guys uh, at a uni and they, they got the map from, from us because they wanted to do it and hopefully I gave them the GPX file or, or the K, KLR file or whatever it is, the KLM file uh, for Google Maps but you can download that from, from my Reva, Reva map on, on my site, you can download the route um, it's well worth taking, so much more fun we ended up going, when we went back, we went back on the road and you know when you're going through La Paz it takes a long time to get through the city and this just basically bypassed the city but a fantastic route absolutely exhilarating um, this is at normal speed it's just Chris going for it no I think it's better but if these guys had a you know if they had it just kept going I was probably a, a little bit slower than them um, and they, 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 they didn't have to stop for me, but I, when, when we got onto some straights, I had to give it a bit more gas to keep up with them. I think they might have stopped and slowed down for me at the start. When, when we started, we were on cobblestones, and that's another thing. My bike, when you've got that flat, where it's just perfectly flat at the rear, um, on the back of the bike, on cobblestones, it just doesn't want to stick. And it, well, there's nothing to grip, so it's just always just sliding. So you just got to keep the bike straight and don't try to do anything sudden. Okay, so good morning guys. Uh, for those of you who have done this, uh, we're heading to Death Road in Bolivia. Um, it's actually been pretty death defying getting here. We, we basically skipped around the city and went up mountains and like single track, but two way, just one track in mud and slush and I nearly lost the bike a few times with a couple of the guys, um, we've got a guide with us, we think it was worthwhile having it, he's nearly killed us, he's, he's the guy in the front there, Tito, he's always in attack mode, uh, he wants to go hard and fast and uh, we want to take some photos and prove that we've done it uh, <laughs> and take our time, but um, God, what an exhilarating ride you here, we've been on the tarmac now for about 10-15 minutes and uh, I'm going to show you some photos and footage now of our trip here to get to here. Um, and now this is the new road. Um, and uh, we're about to jump onto the death road. Um, the famous or infamous, we should say, death road. So I've lightened the bike up as much as I can. I've got uh, plenty of photography here and shit. But um, 
Yeah, just kind of take our time. You can see we've got the camera, I've got my TG tracker on the back of both of the bikes. One's a little bit skew with, we'll fix that before we... We've had a couple of run-ins with cars overtaking trucks while we're on one side of the road. Since Bolivia haven't learnt the lessons from Peru. Um, but my God, what a, what a ride this has been to here. It's been two, two hours now, or three hours nearly. And it's been friggin' heart-stoppingly amazing. And just getting to the death road. So, and apparently the road that we took was w a lot harder than the death road. That's what uh, Tito said. Uh, the death road is better. And uh, probably because the road we took was clay. And this bike with these tyres, it is just a nightmare. He wanted to take a shortcut up the mountain. My bike couldn't make it. And it was just spinning. Uh, these Heidenau K60s, amazing road tyres, great off-road tyres, shocking tyres in wet clay or, or, or slippery conditions because uh, they've got that groove, that, that straight down the middle and, uh, and that basically that flat part down the middle just, um, yeah, you, you're getting nowhere. So um, all in all, we're uh, all pretty excited right now. And uh, I mean, these mountains here, you've got no idea how massive they are and how insignificant we are with next to them. Uh, now, one of the roads we, we went on, which is not the, not the road, um, not the road, Uh, not the road uh, that was dangerous, well, not, it wasn't dangerous, it was just slippery, you had to go really slow, but it was basically up the side of them, it was crazy, but it was fun, but it was fun, your heart was in your mouth the whole time, especially going down, the, as you're going up, not so bad, um, some really, but going down with this bike, and 270 kilos plus 110 of me, 380 kilos, uh, yeah, not ideal. Oh, I'll stop off here. So that was just a little bit of commentary for me on the road. Um, I oh. didn't do too much of it because while I was riding, I was actually trying to concentrate as much as I could. Um, but uh, yeah, it took us probably about an hour, an hour and a half. And this is just uh, this is before you can see Death Road down there on the left, on the left. So this is before we were just having a look. And uh, Tito, I think Tito goes off and has a little, uh, a little pee. I've got this sped up quite, quite, quite significantly. This, this video, but we're just sitting there just talking about the the route we'd done and uh, having a bit of a laugh, and and then we were, where we're going to go, and it was uh, it was uh, it was really good fun. Um, there's a truck going past all the smoke, but uh, yeah. So um, so now basically we're getting set to go on the death road and. So here we are starting out on uh, on the death road. This is right at the base. Uh, we're, gonna, we're basically going to stop for lunch um, a little bit further up uh, at a really nice little restaurant. Uh, I think it's an accommodation as well, like hostel, and they have like put on a banquet for us. It was like ten, fifteen dollars each, but it was really well worth it. Really nice, really really nice, happy people in there as well. It was really cool. So you're supposed to be riding on the left side, uh, Chris, uh, as Tito told us twice before we started, but Chris, I don't, I don't think heard it. This is where we stayed for lunch. Uh, it was really cool, a uh, really good spot for a, for a bite to eat. Was, we were the only ones there, really, except for the staff. 
So yeah, that was uh, it was really nice. It was a good good spot to start. So here we are on now on death road. This is the beginning of it. So it's fairly open. The beginning of uh, death road for a few miles. You, you just start climbing slowly. And uh, this is with the camera on the back, and it's a bit shaky because it's on the back of Tito's bike. Uh, and um, it's a little bit, a little bit shaky. So I had one camera, I had a TG tracker on the back, the Olympus TG tracker on the back of uh, Tito's bike, and I had an, uh, uh, I had another one of those, another one of those cameras on the back of uh, Chris's bike. So uh, Tito was at the front, so that was always getting footage of myself or of uh, of uh, of Chris. But it's just a little bit shaky, well, a lot shaky. But as you can see, as as you start climbing the first ten miles, the first thing you're going to notice when you start, and I'll show some video of that as well, uh, is the first thing you'll notice is that you'll have a lot of mountain bikers and the reason for that is the first part of death road is they have a lot of tours so there's people coming down and you've got to ride on the left hand side which is the opposite of what you normally ride it's familiar to me like from australia but you, you either, they tell you to keep to your left uh, and the reason for that is because the mountain bikers are coming down that first the first little section only for about five miles uh, three or four miles they're coming down but it was pretty good fun as Chris myself and Tito what there you can see the, the mountain bike there um, and then we, you, you, we get to a restaurant where we stop and we have our lunch and then we head up the, the, the true uh, death road so this is just getting to the death road really um, but um, yeah the mountain bikers they come flying down but we had a bit of fun watching them all get washed out in the. Uh, they tried. Some of them tried to cross through the river on the bike, and they all came off. So we were just laughing our heads off because, you know, with the rocks in the in the in the, uh, they weren't going fast. So they were going really slow. So it wasn't going to hurt them. But it was just funny watching them. And Chris was ha having a hard time staying on the left hand side. <laughs> we're, we we're on the wrong side there. Um, when we first started, he kept going out to the right, and so bikes would come down, and you'd have to swerve them. Tito told him to stay to the left a few times. It was pretty funny. Just old habits. Um, but yeah, it was. Um, the, so the first part of the ride is just a nice climb. Nothing dramatic. Um, pretty easy, actually. So it's about 40, 50 miles all up the death road, and it's probably the last last 10 to 20 miles that gets a little bit hairy but it, you know it wasn't uh, anything uh, anything near as uh, as dramatic as what people make out the reason is, is that there's a new road being built that bypasses this so a lot of the trucks go on that road but there's still a few cars and trucks that that you pass but in the past it would have been a lot a lot scarier riding this road especially about there's about two or maybe four or five different sections that would have been ridiculous with, with trucks on the road, trying to, trying to edge around them. And, uh, you know, at one stage, this was the world's most dangerous road, uh, just the amount of deaths. I would say that the amount of injuries and deaths on this road now would probably be mountain bikers. <laughs> um, so this here is where the point is where all the mountain bikers started. Um, and there's a few buses there with mountain bikers, and they just fly down the hill now. Um, there's Chris out in front of me, um, little little river crossing where they're doing some work. Um, but most of it was pretty pretty tame, you know, for the for the first 10, 15 miles. Uh, but you could, as you kept climbing, it, it started getting more and more interesting. And you know, some we had some clouds coming through us and stuff like that. But it wasn't too bad. Um, but yeah, the the first part of the this this journey. We're basically just climbing, and uh, this is where we stopped for the bus, you know, where the buses were, but they, they'd all left by now. And it, again, this is the TG tracker on the back of Tito's bike, so it's a bit shaky, so I sort of uh, just skip through this a little bit.
Chris Spike was a was an old bike. He only got it. He picked it up for a few thousand, but it was a really good bike. Like it really handled well, and uh, he had some problems. Just about everyone I met that had an older bike had lots of problems getting down, and that's why you know um, so few people actually make the journey. Uh, usually because it's usually a you know, right down to Patagonia because there's usually a few reasons. One of them is bike breaking down, two of them is they just, it just gets too much for them. It's just, it is hard work a lot of the time, you know, and some of the days are really hard days, but this was just a great fun day. Um, and I'm just trailing behind Chris. So this is the actual re repeat of the video footage below, but this one is uh, following, uh, this is Chris. So I was actually behind Chris, Chris's camera before. It's good footage, and you, you, you're just climbing slowly to begin with. Um, actually, there's there's no really ridiculously steep climbs. There's a few corners that went up pretty high, and any time you got to really big corners, they were usually pretty roughed up, um, and so it, it became it was a little bit of a challenge around some of the bigger corners. But I was thinking this is a dream, you know. Easy riding, no cars. We had a few, a few along the way, but not too many. We had a couple of trucks as well. Um, but in the old days, this was a busy road, um, and so it would have been a lot slower to get around. There's people that live up here, you know, um, uh, but it would have been a lot slower to get around than the old days. As you can see, Chris has got a lot thinner tyres than me, and I think that helps. Um, definitely helps in uh, in the mud and, and stuff like that. He ended up getting a puncture. Just when we were in, uh, we met we met up again in Santiago in Chile. He, he, we went we rode together in uni as well, the salt flats. But then we, we went our separate ways. We met up again in Chile, in San Diego, and uh, he was wondering whether to put new tyres on or not, and he ended up, he ended up not, and ended up getting a puncture the, the next day. Uh, is Chris looking for me? So as we get higher and higher, um, the roads get a bit, bit, bit tougher and a bit thinner now, and uh, so no, nowhere near as much uh, room as we had before and getting around some of these corners became a little bit of a challenge. Um, it's pretty thick dirt and clay and good fun though. This is on Chris's bike. We've sped this up a little bit, just get through it. Otherwise this, this video goes forever. I think he tried to turn his camera off then, I'm not sure. <laughs> He's still trying. Go Chris, go, go, go. Where is it? Where is it? Tito was flying mate. He was absolutely flying. So we just keep climbing and climbing now. Nothing was really, really steep at all, but um, but the higher we got, the roads we got progressively worse and uh, a lot thinner, especially once we're up against the rock and cliff faces. So you can go, you can do the route twice. You can go up the route and then back down the route. But I don't, we didn't see any point in going back the, down the route, and, and plus we. We'd spend so much time screwing around. There's one of the trucks on the road. This is where the, the, the river crossing there, where the people were falling in the water. We were just watching them go in there. We met a couple of Italian guys, uh, nice guys. They had some nice bikes too. Um, and this is just, we're just climbing higher and higher now. So you can imagine this road with big semi-trailers, big tractor-trailer trucks coming through and stuff like that. It's pretty open. It, we, we, it's about a, a two-mile area where it was really open. So 
Tito's got his jacket off now, so this is on, this is on board with Chris. Quite a few of those little shops and turns. Chris, Chris, Chris and Tito didn't have problems with any of them really. Uh, their bikes seem to handle it everything really well at their obviously their skill level. So once you get to the, the really cool stage, it gets a little bit more hairy and it's some big drops and uh, thin roads and stuff like that. And we're coming up to that now. We've got a lot of photography. I, I, I also try to get the drone going, but the drone just wouldn't pick up the GPS signal. And then when it did, it just wouldn't fly. And it became, you know, went through all the checks and it kept failing and it just became really, really annoying. They still do a fair bit of work on it. Apparently, they had a, a landslide here a few weeks earlier, and uh, and they cleared cleared it out. There's just some shots along the way. It doesn't seem that scary now, does it? I mean, it, it wasn't really scary at all, to be honest. There was just a, there was just exhilarating in a few places that up up further ahead. Chris pretty happy with himself. So now we're getting closer to the to the final stages, uh, where it starts getting a little bit more interesting. Again, any time here you wouldn't want to. In certain parts here, you just wouldn't. You just work, just working on that, uh, clearing all the rubble off the road. Which apparently, when they get big rains, the water washes a lot of stuff through the road. So we now start getting into the the, the final stages of the climb. The last ten mile, the last five miles, ten miles after we finish, after you get to the really cool spot, um, is was pretty much covered in just fog and clouds we couldn't really see anything so this is all pretty pretty cool pretty easy riding The funny thing about it is, if it wasn't called Death Road, you would you would say, look, there are some really crazy spots. But uh, the road beforehand, as you saw in the previous video, was a lot more a lot more exhilarating than, than this road. Uh, there is one big section of this road that that we're coming up to that uh, that is pretty cool and uh, pretty hairy, uh, and you you just wouldn't want to be having trucks or anything like that around it. But the the section's only a, a few miles long. You know, um, it's a long few miles over because you're going pretty slow through it. And you just definitely wouldn't want to have traffic coming. You know, they, you saw on Top Gear where they had those videos. That was all through that section going around uh, other cars and trucks. But I don't know whether that was set up or not. Because you can see from the top if there's cars coming through. So you can actually stop and wait for them to come through. Um, but I mean, you know, they, they did go through it when it was... Uh, when it was that the main freeway hadn't been built. So I, sw I sort of take away a little bit of the mystique of uh, Death Road here by showing you the whole of Death Road, but uh, most people only show you the real scary bits, but I just figured it's a good way to get to know what it is. And basically any rider of 
anyone from who's had a little bit of experience would have no problems. The other road, getting up to Death Road, that's another story altogether. So here we are getting to the, the really cool parts of Death Road now. You've got the big, up on the, on the left there, massive sheer cliffs, and on your right, sheer cliffs as well. And obviously you can see here, you just don't want trucks of that coming <coughs> anywhere near you. <laughs> uh, you don't want any traffic at all. Uh, and if I had an option, I'd be sticking over the left hand side, I would drop my bike on the left rather than going on the right side in some of these places. But um, it's really cool. The, 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 the drops to the right hand side are just astronomical uh, in a lot of these places but you, you, you basically look down and go oh shit you know? then you just keep riding you just forget about it so we're going pretty slow we're only doing about 40 kilometers 40 50 k's an hour But every now and then you get a little bit of the road narrows and you just look down and you think, well, holy cow, you know. <laughs> a little house there on the side, I don't know if anyone's living there anymore. Someone's definitely living there on the left. But it's a real tourist attraction now. Maybe a hundred mountain bikers were on the road when we when we went there. There's only they're only on the first section. You could you could do the mountain biking from right from the top, and I'm, I'm sure people do that as well. But I don't think we saw any bikers uh, on the top. And you you'd have to have some pretty good experience if you're a mountain biker going down some of those because it is pretty steep going down. It's not doesn't feel steep going up. Stick to the left there, Chris. <laughs> Just trying to turn the camera off. Turn it on. So all this section is pretty hair-raising. Just, just for the sheer drop on the right. I mean, you, you, again, you'd have to do something pretty silly to come off, and that would be a mix of speed and, and le a, a lack of skill which basically gets just about every motor, motorbike rider unstuck when they mix those two things together, a lack of skill and, the, and too much speed. And that's, that's riding anywhere, basically. So this is the only road in Bolivia where you have to ride on the left hand side. I'm not sure why they have it that way, but maybe, no, I don't know, maybe it's just been like that for a long time. Final section after this video is the is the the really cool part. You can see it ahead with the waterfalls coming down, cascading down the, the cliff faces. And though the cliff faces are probably a hundred metres high um, on the left side, and then then you've got this massive drop on the right that just keeps going down. You can see trucks down below that have that have crashed, but they haven't recovered them. They've just left them there. And people, a lot of people have died. At one stage here, about uh, between 250 and 300 people a year died, which is nearly one a day, which is insane. 
but maybe they just dropped a few busloads of people off there every now and then. Keep the stats up. But at this stage, this was just a really good ride, you know, uh, really good fun riding off road. So this is coming through the to the uh, to the to crazier parts now. Again, a lot of fun. We ended up stopping up here for about an hour, resting, and I tried to get the drone going, just wouldn't go, because uh, we are going to fly the drone off on the right-hand side and redo this section. Now, you wouldn't want to pass a truck there. <laughs> insanity, just pure insanity. But uh, sensational, real, a lot of adrenaline running through your, through your body when you're going past areas like that. And this whole area here, this next few miles, is just all like this, really thin roads. I mean, I don't know how a bus and a car can be a lot of backing up and stuff like that and then people taking risks. I think I'll go through the rain. <laughs> Stay away from the cliff side there. There's a cross. We ended up stopping up here on the right hand side for a little while. Great fun. So we stopped and got a few shots of us riding from there and Tito took some video and of us riding and uh, some photos up on the corner there. Good time to take a break. Chris needed to uh, go to the bathroom and uh, <laughs> I hope he doesn't mind me saying this, but me and Tito said, oh yeah, no worries. And we, I gave him some wet wipes and stuff like that. And then we looked around and he was just sitting on a rail. Dropping off, dropping off a couple, dropping the kids off the pool on the over the rails. I said, Jesus Christ! At least go somewhere in the in the bushes or something, you know. <laughs> it was Tito just looked over and just started laughing his head off. It was pretty funny. But this is this is the the, the craziest section of it. We got some photos of us on the you know, Tito took some photos of us on the cliff face and and riding. Uh, we were just parked there, I think. The cliff face was just crazy, and you, you can see some trucks and cars going there. They're mainly buses, and a bit of a blurred out image there, but nice little image. It's on board, Chris. Cool shots. That was from Chris's GoPro. This is a photo of Chris doing it. This is just the cliff face that you see. It's pretty crazy, eh?
We're not at the highest point, though. It does go up higher, but uh, it got pretty foggy. It's just with a couple of Italian guys. Couple more shots from the top. It's quite a famous little memorial thing. That'll get washed away. Apparently, part part of the rest of it got washed away too. sped up version of Chris and I. Tito was taking photos of us from the other side. Getting singular ones and Chris is getting out of the way so I can get a photo of by myself and then he can get a photo of by himself. The two of us. He saw those shots earlier. shots from the from the top there that was that was the, the best area just here was the, the prettiest area I'm sure everyone gets photos done here and videos <laughs> good hey Chris So this is now sped up video, us heading back. Beautiful views, it was freezing cold, right up high. But what a, what a day, you know, a great day's riding. You know, 10, 10 hours all up, nine hours, 50 minutes, two, about 100, 130, 140 miles, that's all. Uh, but uh, good fun riding. <laughs> yeah, so the, the company, if you want to hire, I, I always suggest you do this. If, you, if you're going to do something uh, pretty cool, if you've got some money, uh, a bit of spare money, uh, hire a private tour guide to take you on different tracks to get to the cool spot. Cost you maybe a hundred, two hundred dollars. Like we gave Tito a fifty buck tip as well, uh, but well worth spending that extra money, the extra coin, and um, yeah, just uh, uh, just makes it such a better experience because we could have just ridden on this road, sort of road um, to get there um, and to get back. Look at these mountains, just sensational. So it was, even the trip back was pretty cool. Went through the city, uh, but it was a bit slow. That's the only thing. Uh, but it was a great day's riding and moto tours, uh, 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 motorbike tours Bolivia. Uh, I'll have the link for the for their website in the description. Uh, but give them a, you can do a full tour with them on the death road uh, with a group of people, or you can just do what we did hire. Them. Yeah, you're saving maybe a hundred dollars just doing a tour, which is fine. And that's getting back home. All right, guys, questions or comments below. Thank you.